Uh, okay, thank you for the floor. Uh, I'm very honored to be invited here in your presence and to give uh, this lecture. So, uh, yeah, in context of all HPC resources, I decided to give a lecture on application side. So what actually do we apply HPC uh, enormously in the later time? Of course, this project, uh, the whole uh, SARS-CoV-2 research uh, is mainly done on our VIGA HPC resources in Slovenia. This is probably the system you have heard of. It's a new European system of 10 petaflops. But we are also doing research on distributed network project called SIDoc at home. Maybe after I finish the lecture, I will give, uh, uh, maybe we can talk a bit uh, on that system and our experience on that. So, yeah, um, application of HPC resources on SARS-CoV-2 research. So my name is Marko Jukic. I come from Faculty of Chemistry and Chemical Engineering in Slovenia. Uh, University of Maribor, right? And we do a lot of uh, drug design and new drug research. And for that research, um, HPC resources are of paramount importance. So yeah, I will start with coronaviruses that are our everyday companions. And they are named after their spikes located on their surface, right? And they are known for major subgroups and they were discovered in the 60s, right? They are really known because they cause common colds, right? Um, but of course, uh, we got uh, we got really a nice surprise. Um, and sometimes coronaviruses, which usually infect animals, can skip to human hosts. And they this kind of viruses can be really, really dangerous to human because the mechanisms for protection are not yet in place. And um, in the context of previous SARS infections, we got a really horrible surprise in new, no, it, now it's not new anymore, but in SARS coronavirus 2. Um, of course, this is not the first occurrence. So previous occurrences can be traced to 2003, uh, where previous coronavirus infections uh, were reported, named SARS and of course, Middle East respiratory syndromes called MERS. Um, the novel virus was reported in December 2019. Um, and in 2020, the virus spread and caused a global havoc and global pandemic. And even now we are fighting uh, with this threat, right? So the reported deaths are in a variable percentage from 0.2 to more than 5% and patients progress to pneumonia and multi-organ failure that leads to potential death, especially without medical assistance. And in this context, the whole community started to develop uh, drugs. But I must emphasize that our group in the Faculty of Chemistry, we are mainly uh, one of our research, uh, research uh, fields is drug design even before this coronavirus uh, threat came, so we are really focused on, on drug design from the get-go, right? So this is the pathogen, everybody knows it by now, it is really presented in all uh, layman literature, and there are some of the proteins are here extra presented, so membrane, envelope, the horrible spike protein that binds to our cells, and of course, nucleocapsid protein. And inside this particle, there is a genetic material. What we are interested in is the proteins that are coded by this virus, right? And here is the complete genome and all the proteins that are being coded uh, by this virus. And you can see there are a lot of them. And some of these proteins are really interesting to be a potential future drug targets, right? So we are here interested in developing novel drugs, not vaccines. Uh, people are usually usually mixing this up. So uh, novel drugs, yeah? So drugs that would be able to treat future uh, coronavirus infections. And here also, we are not focused on only SARS-CoV-2, 
but we are trying to research and develop drugs that could be potent on multiple corona viruses, right? So, um, can some of these systems be elaborated upon? Of course, they can, especially with the help of HPC resources. So, here is the SARS-CoV-2 viral life cycle. On the left side, we start when the virus binds to the receptor, AC2 mainly, uh, described in the literature, then it enters our cell, gets packaged into the endosomes and gets, of course, uncoated, where it releases its genetic material that get translated, transcripted and, of course, replicated. Um, in the middle step, some of the proteins that are being coded, uh, polyproteins also dubbed, uh, are getting proteolized to form functional virus proteins that can help you know, uh, to uh, replicate the virus particles. And finally, these virus particles are being assembled and when they mature, they are released from the cells. And in this manner, the cells get exhausted and they cause a lot of pathological changes and havoc in our body. So in our research, um, we are trying to find novel drugs that act on various targets, on various uh, pathways in the viral life cycle. And here uh, I just um, emphasized the main, the main steps that are targeted by our research. So entry, proteolysis, transcription, replication, and of course, viral assembly. Um, the first target I would uh, I would emphasize is free CL pro. That is the main viral protease. So here for this uh, HPC audience, I will display on the left is the protein. It's homodimer. How does it look like? On the right is uh, this protein, and emphasized in this rounded square is the active site we are researching. Um, so the key here is that processing of initially translated polyproteins uh, is split or proteolized in functional molecules. And this uh, free CL pro is also the most researched target in the um, development of novel drugs. And how does the typical uh, workflow look like? So we usually use some HTVS software and we use multiple million of compounds and we do some comparisons. How are those compounds? Do they have any probability of binding to the target? And we do this molecular docking studies. And for those, of course, we need the targets themselves and we need uh, the libraries of compounds. And after this calculation, we do some hit selection that can be seen in the bottom. And then we do bioevaluation uh, to test if the compounds are actually uh, working in the, in the, on the isolated systems or even complete cells. And here uh, is just designation, how do these compounds look like? So this is the active site. And um, this is how the compounds look and this is how they bind to the active site. And we analyze in detail what bonds can be formed between these compounds and their respective targets. And we try to calculate if there is uh, any, any probability or even energetic favorability for binding events of these compounds. And in this manner, we identified a couple of new chemical scaffolds that uh, are going into the future research. And that future research is actually focused on uh, whole cell studies. Here is another example of prioritization of compounds for, for CL Pro research. And again, you will see a very similar profile. On the left, we start with a huge library of compounds and we do some calculations on molecular docking and then we do some filtering to identify compounds that are favorable for future, future medicinal chemistry scenarios, right? Uh, namely, we want to avoid compounds that could also bind to other targets that could be covalent binders, that could be aggregators, that could not specifically be active in various biological assays and so on. 
uh, we analyze and compare this chemical space. And then after compound prioritization, those compounds get synthesized and, or even bought and then evaluate it on actual targets and on actual virus uh, cultures. Uh, and again, this is designation of the compounds that we identify. These are novel compounds with novel binding modes that are going into the future research. Uh, and hopefully we will gain new insights on inhibition of this main protease from the SARS-CoV-2 virus that will enable us additional uh, additional research and maybe even uh, progress these compounds further, right? Um, what we also did, I will go to another project again for CL Pro. We also examined the natural compounds that could bind to this uh, main protease. And we focused uh, on polyphenols uh, that are being shown here. And again, we identified what modes uh, could these natural compounds bind. And of course, uh, you can see here on the bottom left side, this is some binding mode of a phenol compound. And on the right uh, is the time elaboration of the binding mode of such a compound. So this is molecular dynamic study. And this we study how these interactions are present throughout time, right? Not just a static picture, but we uh, try to examine uh, if these interactions are stable or not. What is here interesting is that natural compounds are really, um, really favored by the press, by the layman community. Everybody is talking about natural compounds against diseases and so on. Uh, but uh, the problem is really hard here. So natural compounds, um, they, are, they have really low bioavailability and they are promiscuous binders. So they really act on many, many targets and it is really challenging to study them. Uh, the problem is really, really challenging also for huge computational resources. And we try to study if there are any motifs that can be used for, let's say, scaffold hopping or for future drug design, right? So maybe there are some uh, binding patterns shown by natural compounds that can be used in our drug design. Uh, and in this manner, these studies are really invaluable. Um, and of course, here we identify elagic acid as a potential binder and maybe uh, some source material for future uh, optimization or for scaffold identification. Uh, it's interesting uh, in this work that we got cited and really got exposed by the media, yes, uh, natural compounds against SARS-CoV-2. But here in, in this uh, work, we actually show that, of course, natural compounds are really, really important. But one should really take care and study them really, really carefully and profoundly uh, to identify uh, things and data that can be actually used uh, in the future, future drug design. Here, uh, I will touch upon another target. So this is another viral protease. It's papain-like protease, so PL-PRO. And again, here we are searching for novel inhibitors. Uh, and this also a protein splits viral polyproteins into several functioning proteins that allow viral replication. Here on the top, you can see how does the protein look like. On the bottom, uh, you can see its binding site, and on the right, it's a small compound. Uh, and how does the small compound look like in comparison uh, with large protein? Again, you can see our workflow. We start with a huge collection of compounds and go through, go through various docking steps uh, and uh, in silico simulations to identify compounds that can be potential binders, right? And again, we arrived at the novel chemical matter that can be used for future drug research. Uh, here, I will touch upon another uh, target. It is uh, RDRP. Uh, and this is also very, very known viral target because it is targeted by remdesivir. That is also uh, very, very present in layman literature. And again, here we produced and went through a 
screening scenario to identify compounds like this that can be used in future studies of this of this target, right? Um, here I will touch upon one problem. So I always emphasize in this work, yeah, we have large libraries of compounds um, and indeed uh, also large libraries of targets. And here um, the key aspect is library enumeration and library studies and library preparation. And with this, you need the support of uh, HPC resources. So you can imagine um, it goes really through a large number of calculations. Each compound is flexible, so many poses have to be calculated. Each target is flexible. Each compound has to be sampled in a complete target space. So you can, you can imagine how many uh, computations are required here. And without HPC resources here, uh, this research could not be uh, done. And uh, here the library study uh, is really, really important. Namely, vendors lack the information on library design and the references to primary literature. Uh, few references to active compounds are provided. Uh, very few receptor data on large libraries, uh, no detailed functional group decomposition and so on, uh, and uh, no elaboration on the chemical space itself. So this, a lot of design has to go uh, to the library study and also to the target study, right? And herein, uh, computational resources are, of are really paramount. So I will skip the next couple of slides uh, I will just mention this. So here the problematics is viral mutations, right? And here is another aspect. When we design a target on, uh, design a compound on a specific target, that target also has various uh, iterations through time, namely mutations are, uh, are being produced by the virus. So we also have to be attentive to this problematic. So this is, uh, you can see here this graph uh, various viral variants are present in the wild. So we also have to take this into account. And uh, with this, let's say uh, this is a typical surface of two protein contact. And you can see in red, a certain amino acid gets changed for another. And this causes this complete surface to behave completely differently. And you have to take this into account. So uh, with this, I would like to conclude this, our uh, applications of HPC resources on many viral proteins. You can see we are really active. And here I would just like to especially thank uh, senior research fellow Natalia, uh, Maxim, of course, assistant professor Chertomir, and professor Urban Bren, who is paramount in pushing this research into future, uh, future uh, biological evaluation uh, evaluations that are critically needed for our future research. So for the, for with this, I would like to conclude. Thank you all for your attention. I hope it was interesting. If you have any questions, you can uh, write me an email. Uh, if you have any questions here, I'm available now for your uh, for your for your questions, and I will try to answer the best I can. Thank you very, very much. It was a very interesting lecture for us who are not spe specialists in uh, biological topics. It was a kind of introductory lecture for, for us. So uh, I think uh, those who want to ask questions and, and ask in English, please, those who are ask in Russian, I will translate. Я переведу вопрос, если кто-то хочет задать по-русски. Вот. А кто по-английски, то сразу, да. Ah, ah, sorry, sorry, uh, for, for a minute. Извините, а завтра так Да, вот спасибо за внимание. Да, докладчик представил разработку лекарств с точки зрения химии и биологии. И хочу добавить, что в четверг будет доклад на тему вычислительной инфраструктуры, которую мы используем в данном совместном проекте. Проект международный, он продолжается уже два года. Мы этому очень рады. И э, вычислительная инфраструктура представляет собой проект добровольных вычислений, в котором сейчас участвуют 6 тысяч компьютеров. Вот. Так что приглашаю всех в четверг на доклад.